right, hello wine drinking people. Today is Friday, the 11th of July. I'm still on vacation down in the Keys, but due to the magic of television, I'm here with you today. and We've got a great tasting coming up. You've noticed the calendar was a bit light the first couple weeks in July, and that's because I'm out of town. No mystery there. And uh, somebody went on the website and said, man, your website's broken. There's, I can't see any events going on the next two weeks the end of the month of June, and I said, well, we don't have any events, so uh, it's, you know, the country's uh, birthday, July 4th, so, uh, you know, it's not a real busy time for us anyways, you know, we're a little bit, you know, we still got a lot of great deals coming in, and, you know, we still, uh, we're open 24-7, our website's up, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be here every day but Sunday still, but uh, like I said, a little bit hot out there, so we're taking a little bit of a break. I always do my family vacation, but we're back at the end of July, and we've got some great events coming up. This Priorat tasting is an annual event here, and the wines of the Priorat, well, they've been growing grapes there for a long time, since the 12th century. The monastery, the Carthusian monastery at Scaladay, was founded in 1163. And uh, these guys terrace the hillsides back there. It really is a spectacular wine growing region. And, uh, you know, their focus here is Grenache and Carignan, but they planted some Syrah and some Merlot and some Cabernet up there. But I think the greatest, the best wines here are these Grenache and Carignan based wines. And, uh, well, the original five, the founding fathers of the Priorat, even though they've been growing grapes there for a long time, uh, like I said, back to the 12th century, it wasn't until the 80s that really the new incarnation of these uh, top level wines in the Priorat started to come out and of course our good friend Alvaro Palacios was one of the first he and um, Rene Barber and along with four others 1989 through 91 uh, they pooled their efforts and uh, they had one winery in Grotta Loops and uh, they made uh, one wine sold under five different labels, the Clos Morgador, Rene Barbier, Clos Dolphy, uh, Palacios later, later renamed this Finca Dolphy, Clos Erasmus, Clos Martinet, and Clos de Lorbach. And, uh, you know, the rest is history, man. They used to have about 5,000 hectares here, but uh, then Phylloxera devastated this area. And today, I think they're still only at about half of that production or less and uh you know there's not a lot of areas that you can plant here it's very uh uh very steep i remember my trip to the priorat we went up and visited one of the vineyard sites and uh scared the hell out of us just driving up there uh, the wheel well of the truck was about this far from the back, and I remember sitting back of the truck, and as they were going around these three port turns and backing up, it looked like we were going over the edge. And you can't uh, get any machines up here; you have to hand harvest, and the natural, uh, the high altitude naturally lowers the yields, so uh, you get a really small production from the grapevines there. And that's why the wines are expensive. So we've included some of the wines from Monsat, which are the flatland, the low lying areas of the Priorat. Everything in the Priorat is high altitude and. Steep. And you get this liquoril, this slate soil, and uh, you have these wild flowers and herbs that grow that really influence the aromas in the wine. Very typical and very unique to the Priorat. So these are really wonderful wines, very unique. And uh, for, hey, for people that like Cabernet from California, they're big, they're ripe, they're rich. And, uh, well, they used to use a lot of new oak, not today, not, not as much. So uh, I think they're good crossover wines for people that like California wines into Spanish wine. So check it out. Everything we're going to be serving here at the Wine Watch at our annual Priorat tasting. Um, I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.